The farm. My uncle is a farmer. He lives on a farm. He has many different types of animals. In the barn, there are horses and cows. The cows swish the flies away from themselves with their tails. It sounds very loud if a cow says "moo" when you are standing there. The cows eat the grass from my uncle's field. He gets milk from the cows. I put a saddle on one of the horses and went for a ride. There are pigs in the pig pen. He has goats. He says that the goats will eat just about anything. He has a chicken coop with chickens in it. The chickens lay eggs. Have you ever seen baby chicks? They are very cute. My uncle collects the eggs every morning. There is a rooster too. The rooster crows when the sun comes up. My uncle also has a goose. The goose makes a honking noise. I don't think that the goose likes me. It nips me when I go near it. Many cats live in my uncle's barn. They are stray cats, but he lets them stay there because they keep the mice away. My uncle feeds the cats. My uncle says that he would like to get some sheep for his farm. You can get wool from sheep. There are a lot of animals on my uncle's farm. Transportation. Every family that I know has at least one car. Some families have two or even three cars. Most people get their license to drive when they are sixteen. In my house, we just have one car. If my father takes the car to work, my mother will take the bus. I ride in a school bus to school. My sister works in another town. She gets on the train to go to work. The train station is not far from my house. The train tracks run right by my house. My grandfather from Ireland comes to visit us. He came over by boat. He had to cross the ocean. We went to Florida last year. We flew on a plane. The plane flew right through the clouds. My friend's brother drives a motorcycle. He wears a helmet. I rode on his motorcycle once. I had to sit on the back and hold on tight. I ride my bicycle when the weather is nice. I also have a scooter that I use to travel around. I took a helicopter ride once. The helicopter's propellers were going around when I got on. I went straight up in the air. I enjoyed the ride. I would like to learn how to fly a plane or a helicopter. I like flying through the air. Holidays. In Canada, we have many different days that we celebrate. On the first day of January, there is New Year's Day. That is when we ring in the new year and say goodbye to the old year. In February, there is Valentine's Day. That is the day when you tell your girlfriend or boyfriend that you love them. You can buy them flowers or candy or take them out to dinner. In March, there is Saint Patrick's Day. Everyone pretends that they are Irish on Saint Patrick's Day. They all wear green. Easter comes in the spring. Easter is a religious holiday. Some people celebrate by going to church. Some people think that the Easter Bunny comes and leaves chocolate eggs for them. In May, there is Victoria Day. 
we celebrate this day in honor of England's Queen Victoria. There are fireworks on Victoria Day. July the 1st is Canada Day. In September, there is Labor Day. This is the day that we honor the working man or woman. In October, there is Thanksgiving. We give thanks for all the things that we are fortunate enough to have. We usually have a turkey dinner on Thanksgiving Day. On the last day of October, there is Halloween. The children dress up in costumes and go from door to door collecting candies. Remembrance Day is in November. People wear red poppies and they remember all the people that died for their country. Christmas comes in December. Christmas is also a religious holiday, but many children believe that Santa Claus arrives on Christmas Eve in a sleigh pulled by reindeer. They believe that Santa Claus fills up their stockings with toys and goodies. He gets in and out of people's houses through their chimneys. We don't get off work or school for all these days, but many of them are holidays from work and school. Diseases Some diseases are very deadly and some are not so serious. Most people catch a cold sometimes. A cold makes you cough and sneeze. Colds can be passed on from person to person. Some people get the flu. With the flu, you get chills and a fever. A fever is a high temperature. If you have the flu, you will feel very bad. You have to stay home in bed. There are diseases that children get. The mumps make you have lumps in your neck. Chicken pox and measles leave you with red, itchy dots on your skin. Older people sometimes get arthritis. Their bones get stiff and sore. There are people who get heart disease. In many cases, a healthy lifestyle can prevent heart disease. Cancer can attack different parts of the body. Many smokers get lung cancer. Some diseases are treated with pills or medicine. Other diseases need to be treated in the hospital. Sometimes, doctors need to give you tests to find out what kind of disease you have. The doctor might have to do a blood test or an x ray to find out what is wrong with you. Most diseases can be cured by a doctor. Jobs There are many different jobs that you can choose from. You can be a doctor or a nurse. You could work in a hospital or doctor's office. You might be a firefighter and put out fires. A policeman enforces the law. An actor plays roles on stage or in the movies. You could drive a taxi or be the pilot of an airplane. What kinds of things do you like to do? You might want to be a sales clerk in a store. Maybe you are good at a sport. You could be a baseball player or a hockey player. Being a dentist is a good job. A dentist fixes teeth. If you are good at arguing, you might want to be a lawyer. Do you like to fix people's hair? You could be a hairdresser or a barber. If you are good with your hands, you might want to be a carpenter or a mechanic. If you like to travel, You could be a stewardess or a travel agent. You could be a teacher or a photographer. Are you artistic or creative? You might want to be an artist or a writer. You could work on construction and build houses. You could look after animals and be a veterinarian. If you like to cook, you could be a cook. Or a chef. There are so many places to work and so many jobs to do. 
Maybe you could fix computers or work in a library. You could wash windows or be the captain of a ship. There is no limit to what you can be. My body. On the top of my head, I have hair. Below my hair is my face. I have two eyes. I have eyebrows and eyelashes. Below my eyes, I have a nose. My mouth is below my nose. I have lips. If I open my lips, you will see my teeth and my tongue. Below my mouth is my chin. On the sides of my head, I have two ears. My cheeks are on either side of my nose. My neck holds up my head. My neck attaches my head to my chest. On either side of my chest are my shoulders. My arms hang down from my shoulders. I have wrists on my arms. My hands are attached to my wrists. My fingers are part of my hands. I have ten fingers and ten fingernails. My back is at the back of me. Further down, there is my waist. If I wear a belt, I put it on my waist. My hips are below my waist. My legs come down from my hips. My legs are made up of my thighs, my knees, and my calves. My knees can bend. My ankles are below my legs. My feet are attached to my ankles. My toes are part of my feet. I have ten toes and ten toenails. I am me from the top of my head to the tip of my toes. Clothing. I change my clothes a lot. If I am going somewhere fancy, I wear a dress. I wear stockings on my legs, and I wear a pair of nice shoes. If I am going to play sports, I wear a sweatshirt and jeans. If I am going to the beach, I wear a bathing suit or a bikini. My brother wears swimming trunks to the beach. At work, I wear a skirt and a blouse. Underneath my clothes, I wear underwear. A lady wears a bra and panties as underwear. A man wears boxer or jockey shorts as underwear. Today, I am wearing a blouse and a pair of jeans over my underwear. I have socks and shoes on my feet. In the summer, I often wear sandals on my feet. In the summer, the tops that I wear are usually sleeveless. I usually wear shorts in the summer. Sometimes I wear a sweater or a jacket if the weather is cool. I wear a cap or a hat on my head. I wear a belt to hold up my jeans or my slacks. Women sometimes wear a dress or a skirt. Men wear a pair of slacks and a shirt. Some men wear a suit and a shirt and tie. If it is very cold outside, I wear a winter coat. If it is cold, I like to wear gloves or mittens on my hands. Sometimes I wrap a scarf around my neck to keep warm. I wear a toque on my head in cold weather. I wear boots on my feet in the winter. If it is raining, I wear a raincoat. The way that I dress depends a lot on the weather. Colors. Red is a vibrant color. Roses are sometimes red. Blood is red. White is the color of snow. Clouds are very often white. Blue is the color of the sky and the ocean. Black isn't really a color at all. Tar is black. A crow is black. Green is the color of grass. It is also the color of leaves on the trees in the summer. Brown is the color of dirt. Many people have brown hair. Yellow is a bright color. Most people use yellow when they draw a picture of the sun. Orange is an easy color to remember. That is because an orange is orange. Pink is the color that we dress baby girls in. We dress baby boys in blue. 
Purple is the color of some violets. The Canadian flag is red and white. What color is your flag? Wild animals. Some animals are wild. They don't live in homes or cages. They live in jungles or on plains. The lion is the king of the beasts. He is very mighty. He roars loudly. The giraffe has a long neck. He eats leaves from the tallest trees. The elephant is very large. He has a trunk and two tusks. A tiger has stripes. Some bears are black and some are brown. There are even white bears called polar bears. A kangaroo lives in Australia. That is the only place that you would find a kangaroo except in a zoo. It might be frightening to run into a wolf or a fox. Monkeys run and play in the trees. In Canada, we don't see lions, tigers, giraffes, or monkeys running wild. There are squirrels in my backyard. Sometimes I see a raccoon or a chipmunk. In northern Ontario, you might see a moose or a bear. I have seen a deer in the forest. There are many wild animals. You can see wild animals if you go to the zoo. Months. There are twelve months in the year. January is the first month of the year. It is usually cold in January. February is the second month of the year. It is still winter when February comes. They say that March comes in like a lion and goes out like a lamb. That means that it is still usually cold and sometimes stormy when March begins. By the time that March ends, the weather is starting to get a little better. April is the rainy month. April showers bring May flowers. Many of the spring flowers bloom in May. The weather can be quite mild in May. June is usually a nice warm month. Many people get married in June. July can be hot. People have vacations in July. It is a month to do summer things. It is still summer in August, but the summer is winding down. August is the time to have last-minute vacations. In September, we go back to school. The autumn winds begin to blow. October really feels like autumn. October is Halloween time. November is when we really start to feel the chill. December is the Christmas month. Most people do a lot of Christmas shopping in December. They spend quite a bit of time getting ready for Christmas. All of the months are different. Which month were you born in? Creative people. Some people are just born to create. That's what I think. Some people just have the need to write stories, compose beautiful music, or paint pictures. Creativity seems to be inside them. And they need to let it out. It's good that we have people like that. Composers like Mozart and Chopin have given us music that is incredibly beautiful. It's not just the classical composers who have given us great pieces of music. There are modern composers who have written great songs also. Elton John is an example of someone who has composed many wonderful songs. Andrew Lloyd Webber has given us some very popular musicals like Cats and The Phantom of the Opera. There are so many talented and creative people in this world. When you visit an art gallery, you marvel at how artists are able to recreate realism or make up something that seems totally unreal yet beautiful. The American artist Norman Rockwell painted some pictures that actually look like photographs. He tried to portray life as it was in America. Through his paintings, one can get a good sense of American life through the years. On the other hand, artists like Jackson Pollock did not portray realism. Jackson Pollock painted abstract pictures. His paintings are just as good as Norman Rockwell's, but they are entirely different. Some books that we read are classics. Mark Twain portrayed American life through his characters Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. 
Charles Dickens brought Victorian England to life through his books. Most people are familiar with his Christmas Carol, where the mean and miserable Scrooge learns the true meaning of Christmas. People don't have to read the classics. There are modern writers who entertain readers through their stories. Stephen King has written a number of horror stories. Some of his books have even been made into movies. We are lucky to have creative people who share their gifts with us. If you are lucky enough to be creative, you should use your talents to create works of art that we can all share. I need glasses. I have been having trouble seeing the blackboard. Everything is blurry. I keep getting headaches. I told my mother about it, and she made an appointment with the optometrist. I went to a place where they made me read words and letters on a chart. Some of the words were big, and some were very small. I tried to read everything, but sometimes I couldn't see some of the small letters. The optometrist would cover one of my eyes while I read the chart. Then, she would cover my other eye. She even put some drops in my eyes. I asked the optometrist if I had passed or failed the test. She laughed and said it wasn't that kind of test that you passed or failed. She was just trying to find out if I needed glasses. I did need glasses. My mother and I looked around. There were many pairs of frames. I wanted something that was in style. I tried on many pairs of frames. Some of them looked good on me, and some of them looked really funny on me. I finally chose a frame that was my favorite. I gave them to a lady who did some measurements. She told me to come back on Friday to get my glasses. On Friday, I got my glasses. My friends liked them. They said I looked smart in my glasses. I wore them to school on Monday, and I was able to see the blackboard clearly. I didn't realize how much I hadn't been able to see. Now I don't get headaches anymore. I'm glad that I have my glasses. Everything is a lot clearer now. I am clumsy. My mother says that I am clumsy. My father says that I am clumsy. I know that I am clumsy. I do things all the time that are clumsy. I fall down for no reason at all. If there is a crack in the sidewalk, I will be sure to trip on it and fall down. If I carry a plate of food in the cafeteria, I almost always either drop it or bump into someone with it. I don't try to do these things; it just happens. When I drink juice. I miss my mouth and get juice all over my shirt. I always have something spilled on my clothes. Last week I opened a jar of peanut butter. The jar flew out of my hands and landed upside down on the floor. There was a big glob of peanut butter on the floor. Yesterday I knocked over the sugar bowl. There was a big sticky mess on the floor. I bump my head when I get into the car. I rip my pants on things. I lose my money out of my pockets. I step on the cat's tail. I always feel bad when I do that because the cat thinks I don't love her. I don't mean to do these things. I am just a clumsy person. My parents tell me to slow down. I am always in a hurry. Maybe that's why I'm so clumsy. Maybe it's just a stage that I am going through. If it is, I hope it is over soon. Being clumsy. Is no fun at all. Home alone. I remember the first time that my parents left me home alone. I was very grown up, and I thought that I would be just fine. I was fine for a while. I watched television and had something to eat. I called my friend on the phone, and we talked for a while. Then I sat down to read a book. The house was quiet, very quiet. I found myself listening very carefully. I heard a tap, tap, tapping noise. I wondered where it was coming from. It seemed to be coming from the window. I turned out the lights so that nobody would see me, and I peeked out the window carefully. I was expecting to see a robber tapping at my window. There was nobody there. It was just a tree branch swaying in the breeze and tapping at my window. 
I felt silly. I turned on the lights and sat back down to read my book. A few minutes later, I heard some creaking noises. I listened carefully. Then, I heard a clunking noise. I think it might have been the furnace. Then there was a whirring noise. My imagination began to play tricks on me. I was imagining that there were all kinds of creatures in the house. I told myself to grow up. I wouldn't let my imagination run away with me. I was glad when my parents got home. I told them about all the noises that I had heard. My parents laughed and said that all houses make noises. We're usually just so busy that we don't hear all the noises that go on. I have stayed home alone many times now. I just ignore all the little creaks and noises that I hear. I'm still alert and listen for anything suspicious. But I know that there are lots of noises that are harmless. That tree that taps on my window still frightens me sometimes. But I'm a lot braver now than I was the first time that I stayed home alone. Family, what does the word family mean to you? The easiest way to define family is to talk about who you are related to. Usually, there is a mom. And a dad, and children who are brothers and sisters. This would be the core family. Then there is the extended family, which would include grandparents, aunts and uncles, cousins, nieces, and nephews and in-laws. People married to your brothers or sisters, husband or wife. However, I think the word family has a much deeper meaning. The word family brings words to my mind like love, support, help, kindness, fun, love, trips, closeness, love, forgiving, sharing, love, understanding, respect, and love. You'll notice one word that is repeated over and over again: love. I believe if a family has real love for one another, they will be able to overcome any problems they may have. Actually, they may not have too many problems if they all love and respect one another. However, there are things that cannot be helped, like death, sickness, or accidents. It is during those hard times that a family's love. Helps them to go through those experiences. We had quite a few children in my family. There were brothers and sisters, which included an adopted brother, and a number of foster children too. I was also very fortunate that I had both my mom and dad to live with, and do things like vacations together. We had a lot of fun, and there were some times of tears too. Above all, we love one another. Family is a wonderful thing. I am so lucky. My first job, my first real job, was during my last year of high school. I had taken classes in various business subjects. In that last year of high school, we could do a co-op. That meant we could work part of the time instead of going to school. It would count as a credit. Towards our diploma, the place I got a job was at a men's tailor shop. The owners were a very nice older German couple. They had two other men working for them too. One of the men had had brain surgery for cancer. He had a big, long scar all around the top of his head. He told me all about it. He was always happy and full of fun. I thought he was very brave. The tailor shop made suits to order. One of the salesmen would measure the man, and the customer would choose a fabric and style, for he or his wife liked. The people in the back of the shop would then cut and sew the suit. The suits cost a lot of money. There were also suits already made that the customer could buy instead if they wished. They could also rent suits or tuxedos for weddings or parties. I worked at a little desk. I answered the phone, wrote letters, filed papers, and did some bookkeeping. 
It was about a mile walk from my school to work. I passed many clothing shops. That wasn't good because I spent a lot of my money that I earned in those shops. I worked at the tailor shop for almost a year. It was a good experience and helped me get my next job with the United States Navy. That was fun too. First trip away from home. Today I'm going to my friend's house. Her name is Valerie. This is going to be my first trip away from home without my parents. My dad is driving me to Valerie's house and I'll be staying there for two weeks. Her mom will drive me back home. It takes about one and a half hours to get there. I have to pack enough clothes for play, work, and church. I hope I'll pack the right things. Of course, I have to remember my toothbrush and hairbrush. Valerie lives on a farm. I'll be helping her dad with milking the cows, I think. We'll play up in the hayloft after we have helped put the bales into the barn. We'll be all itchy when the job is done. There are a lot of things to do on a farm. Her mum is a good cook and will feed us well. There is a nice pond where we can go swimming. I mustn't forget my bathing suit. I wonder if the farm dog comes into the pond too. That would be funny. My dad and mum are giving me money just in case we go shopping. I hope we do go shopping because I want to buy lots of candy. I won't tell my mum that. Oh dear, I hear dad yelling, let's go. I haven't even finished packing my things yet. I guess I better stop writing this now and get busy fast. Bye. My job. I work at a conservation park called Balls Falls. I've only worked there for three weeks now. I am a tour guide and I tell people the history of all the old buildings there. Somebody told me that one of the houses I work in is haunted. Now I get chills every time I walk into that house. My boss told me that the stories aren't real, but I have an active imagination. Balls Falls is very beautiful. It has two different waterfalls, the upper falls and the lower falls. There used to be tons of water cascading over them, which turned a big water wheel to grind grain. However, through the years, the amount of water has really lessened. I love working at Balls Falls because I get to work outside a lot. I'm getting a tan. In July and August, I will be working with kids there at a day camp. I am getting ready now, making different crafts and thinking up fun new games to play. I can't wait to start working with them. I think that will be the best part of the summer. I will be going to work tomorrow. I usually have to work from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. I also like the people I work with. They are very nice. Come to Balls Falls and I'll give you a tour. My hobby. Let's see. Today I might go fly a kite or maybe go for a swim. It is hot outside and I don't know what to do. My mom tells me that I should do something that I like doing on hot days. Since our house is nice and cool, I guess I'll stay inside and work on my hobby. My hobby is something that not a lot of people do. I make and collect bookmarks. To make my bookmarks, I use stickers and special art pencils to draw. I buy the stickers at a mall, usually in a card store. The art pencils are bought in an art store. To make the bookmarks, I start with a piece of paper. I measure out how big I want the bookmark to be with a ruler. I once made a bookmark so big that it couldn't even be used in a very big book. After I measure it, I draw lines so that I can cut it straight. Sometimes I use fancy scissors that cut zigzag or frills. Then I start to decorate them. I like to draw cartoons and flowers on my bookmarks. Sometimes I even put real flowers on them. A lot of the time I write little sayings on the bookmarks. I like to give my bookmarks to friends and family. 
Sometimes I even sell my bookmarks to people. I like my hobby. I can draw whatever I want on the bookmarks. Maybe sometime in the future, I will be a famous bookmark maker, and even have my own store. Obesity and nutrition. For people in many countries, one of the great triumphs of modern life is that there is a great abundance of food. In those places, problems such as starvation and malnutrition are no longer prevalent, and people do not worry about going hungry. Despite the fact that there is plenty of food in modern countries, people still face many health problems that are related to their diet. One problem is that modern technology has made it possible to produce cheap and tasty food that is not very healthy. This leads to the problem that many people are obese or very overweight. One example of this is the fast food that is served by many restaurants. This food is often cooked by frying. Fried foods contain a high proportion of fat. Also, fast food meals are often very large. When people frequently eat large amounts of fried fast food, they will likely eat too much fat. This excess can lead to weight gain. Of course, many people enjoy the taste of fried fast food and like to eat it occasionally. However, eating this kind of food too often is bad for one's health. Another example of health problems caused by modern food products involves soft drinks and other sweetened beverages. These drinks, sometimes called pop, have a sweet taste that many people enjoy on occasion. However, these drinks contain large amounts of sugar. When people drink soft drinks very frequently, they consume a great deal of sugar. This excess sugar can lead to weight gain. The weight gain that can result from consuming too much fast food and too many soft drinks can have several harmful effects. For example, people who are very obese have an increased risk of heart disease and of diabetes. Of course, fast food and soft drinks are not the only causes of obesity. Other eating habits may be involved, and so are lack of exercise and genetic factors. To avoid the health problems that are associated with obesity, it is important that one does not eat too much food. However, this does not mean that one should try to eat as little as possible. People need an adequate amount of food in order to stay healthy. Also, it is important to avoid new fad diets that become popular from time to time, because these are often unsafe. Some of the diets that are recommended in popular books do not contain adequate amounts of nutrients, such as vitamins and minerals. Instead, one should try to eat foods that are nutritious. For example, foods such as fruits, vegetables, grains, and lean meats have many vitamins and minerals that are needed for good health. People whose diets consists mainly of these foods will probably be much healthier, on average, than people whose diets contain too many foods that have high levels of fat or sugar. In addition, many of these nutritious foods are also very tasty and enjoyable to eat. Sexual harassment. When an employee is subjected to unwanted sexual advances or comments by a coworker or an employer, we say that the employee is experiencing sexual harassment. In some workplaces, sexual harassment is a serious problem. In its most blatant form, a boss may demand sexual favors from an employee and threaten to fire the employee if she fails to comply. Similarly, the employer might promise a promotion or raise in exchange for some sexual favor. Whenever an employer uses the prospect of reward or punishment as a way of obtaining sexual access to an employee, sexual harassment has occurred. This is not the only form of sexual harassment. Sometimes an employee may be subjected to demeaning comments by her employer or coworker. For example, a boss might make vulgar comments about the physical appearance of the employee. Another example is that a coworker might make remarks that speculate about the sexual behavior of the employee. In both of these cases, the employee is treated disrespectfully on the basis of her sex, so both cases would represent sexual harassment. Some forms of sexual harassment are more subtle. If a group of workers exchanges offensive jokes of a sexual nature in such a way that they can be easily overheard by other workers, then this is also a form of sexual harassment. Similarly, if workers post pornographic pictures in their workplace in such a way that they can be seen by other workers, then this also represents sexual harassment. In both cases, the workplace becomes an environment in which the employee is made to feel uncomfortable because of her sex. Sexual harassment usually involves a female employee who is being bothered by a male employer or coworker. In some cases, a woman might sexually harass a man, or one person might sexually harass another person of the same sex. 
However, these cases are not as common. Also, in some cases, the person who commits sexual harassment is not a boss or coworker, but a customer or a visitor to the workplace. Sexual harassment is a form of intimidation and abuse of power that causes much stress for many employees. In recent years, many steps have been taken to reduce the occurrence of sexual harassment. Educational campaigns have been designed to teach people that sexual harassment is wrong. Stronger penalties for sexual harassment have been introduced. Another way to reduce the prevalence of sexual harassment is to develop a culture of respect in the workplace. People need to be aware of how their jokes or comments might be perceived by others, and to imagine how they would feel if one of their relatives were subjected to sexual harassment. Employers and employees must recognize that sexual harassment is a serious concern and treat potential cases of sexual harassment very seriously. Each company should have clear policies about sexual harassment, and each should establish a fair and efficient process for dealing with complaints of this kind. In this way, the workplace can be a comfortable environment for all persons. The Protestant Reformation. Until about 500 years ago, there was only one Christian church in Western and Central Europe. People from Portugal to Poland all belonged to the Roman Catholic Church. However, soon after the year 1500, people in many parts of Europe broke away from the Roman Catholic Church and began their own churches instead. This was known as the Protestant Reformation. The leader of the early Protestant movement was a German theologian named Martin Luther. Luther believed that many of the priests of the Roman Catholic Church had become too concerned about wealth and luxury. Also, he disapproved of some practices in the church. One such practice was that priests allowed people to pay money to the church in exchange for committing various sins. Luther believed that it was wrong to allow people to buy the freedom to commit acts that were against the teachings of the church. Luther began to criticize the Roman Catholic Church in public, and he refused to acknowledge the authority of the church. He said that instead he would follow the teachings of the Bible as he understood them. The officials of the church declared that Luther was a heretic. However, the local German rulers did not punish Luther. Many of them resented the power of the church and welcomed his ideas. Luther and other Protestant leaders disagreed with the church on several important issues. The Protestants believed that priests should be allowed to marry, whereas the Roman Catholic Church believed that priests should remain celibate. The Protestants believed that people should read the Bible for themselves, whereas the Roman Catholic Church believed that priests should interpret the Bible for the people. During the decades that followed Luther, the Protestant movement spread throughout much of Europe. Over time, many different Protestant churches were formed. During this period, many wars were fought between local rulers who favored Protestantism and other local rulers who supported the Roman Catholic Church. In the end, many parts of Europe became Protestant, such as Scandinavia, England, and parts of Germany, Holland, and Switzerland. However, the people and rulers of many other areas of Europe preferred to remain in the Roman Catholic Church. These areas included most of Southern Europe as well as Poland and Ireland. The Roman Catholic Church changed a few of its practices in response to Protestant criticism, but kept its most important beliefs. In recent times, relations between the Roman Catholic Church and the various Protestant churches have become much more friendly. Some discussions have been held between Catholic and Protestant officials in order to resolve some of their disagreements. Modern engineering wonders. During the 20th century, there were great improvements in engineering technology. These new developments allowed the construction of many amazing tunnels, bridges, towers, and office buildings. For centuries, people had dreamed about the possibility of connecting the island of Great Britain to the mainland of Europe. However, it was only in 1994 that such a link was completed when a tunnel was dug under the English Channel between England and France. The Channel Tunnel, also known as the Channel. Actually, consists of three separate railway tunnels. These tunnels are about 50 kilometers long. They are located about 150 meters below the bottom of the sea. Obviously, this was an extremely challenging project to undertake. As a result of the tunnel, it is now possible to travel between London and Paris by train, and the trip takes only three hours, of which only 20 minutes are spent inside the tunnel. A suspension bridge is a bridge that is supported by strong wires that hang from tall towers. 
The world's longest suspension bridge is the Akashi Kaiko Bridge near the city of Kobe, Japan. This bridge is nearly four kilometers long, and the two towers near the middle of the bridge are about two kilometers apart. It took almost 20 years to design this bridge and 10 years to build it. This bridge was designed to withstand extremely strong winds because Japan often experiences windstorms called typhoons. The bridge was also designed to withstand powerful earthquakes, which sometimes hit Japan. At the beginning of the 21st century, the world's tallest freestanding tower was the Canadian National Tower, or the CN Tower. The CN Tower is 553 meters tall. It is located in the city of Toronto, within the Canadian province of Ontario. The structure was built in 1975 as a television and radio tower. Before the CN Tower was built, TV and radio reception in the Toronto area was poor. This was because the TV and radio signals were blocked by the buildings of downtown Toronto. When the CN Tower was built, this problem was solved. Of course, the CN Tower is also a famous tourist attraction. People can ride in the very fast elevators that take them to observation areas, which are at about 350 and 450 meters above the ground. Although the CN Tower is the world's tallest tower, it is not an office building. The tallest buildings in the world are the Petronas Towers in the city of Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and the Sears Tower in the American city of Chicago. The Sears Tower, which is 442 meters tall, was completed in 1974. It has 110 floors, and its top floor is the highest office floor in the world. However, the Petronas Towers reach slightly higher, to a height of 452 meters. The Petronas Towers were completed in 1998. Obviously, the late 20th century witnessed some amazing achievements of engineering. It will be very interesting to see what new wonders will be constructed in the 21st century. Anne Sullivan and Helen Keller. The story of Anne Sullivan and Helen Keller is the story of a dedicated teacher and an eager student. The story is very remarkable and inspiring because the teaching was done without sight and without sound. Helen Keller was born in the American state of Alabama in 1880. She was a happy and healthy baby, but before she reached the age of two, she was struck by a severe fever. As a result of this fever, she became both deaf and blind. After her illness, the young Helen Keller learned to use her other senses. For example, she touched other people's hands to figure out what they were doing. In this way, she also learned that people could communicate by moving their lips. Helen could not talk; instead, she communicated with her family by making sign movements with her hands and body. However, Helen became very frustrated by her inability to see, hear, and talk. She often became very angry and had many temper tantrums. When Helen Keller was six years old, her family took her to see Dr. Alexander Graham Bell, who was an expert on educating deaf children. This man was also famous for inventing the telephone. As a result of this visit, Helen's parents hired a tutor for their daughter. The tutor was a very intelligent deaf woman named Anne Sullivan. At first, it was difficult to teach Helen because she still made many angry outbursts. Gradually, Anne Sullivan gained Helen's trust. One day, Anne began to teach Helen to communicate. Anne took Helen to a well and pumped some water onto Helen's hand. Then Anne used her finger to write the letters W A T E R onto Helen's hand. By repeating this, Anne was able to teach Helen how to write the word water. As soon as Helen learned that things could be named in this way, she wanted to learn the names of many other objects and actions. She was curious about many things and learned a great number of words. She also learned to read by using the Braille alphabet. This alphabet allows the reader to feel letters and words, which are represented by bumps on a page. Also, Helen learned to talk by feeling and then copying the movements of people's mouths. When Helen Keller was 16 years old, Anne Sullivan went with her to college. Anne acted as Helen's interpreter, and Helen was very successful in her studies. After her graduation, Helen dedicated her life to improving conditions for the blind, the deaf, and the poor. Anne Sullivan died in 1936 and was remembered as the miracle worker for a triumph in educating Helen Keller. 
After Anne's death, Helen continued to give lectures in countries around the world and was active in many political causes. She met with presidents and prime ministers and helped to improve conditions for people who were deaf or blind. At the time of her death in 1968, Helen Keller was one of the most admired people in the world. The automobile or car. In many ways, the automobile has been one of the most important inventions of the modern age. People have been able to travel much more freely and across much greater distances than was possible in the past. The automobile, which most people refer to as the car, has also had some harmful consequences, such as pollution and accidents. However, it is clear that life has changed profoundly as a result of the car. Modern cars are very complicated, but the basic idea of how a car works can be described briefly. When the keys are turned in the ignition of the car, this creates a spark that ignites some gasoline vapor inside a cylinder. Then, the rapid expansion of this vapor pushes against a part called a piston. The movement of the piston then causes a turning motion in a shaft that is connected to the wheels. The wheels turn, and the car moves. The invention of the car and the engines used by cars happened gradually in the late 19th century, mainly in France and Germany. In the early 20th century, an American engineer named Henry Ford developed a new way of making cars. Instead of having one worker produce an entire car, he had each worker perform one part of the production of many different cars. This system was very efficient and allowed the mass production of cars. The first car to be produced in large numbers was called the Model T. The Model T Ford and other cars that were soon produced in large numbers were cheap enough that many people could afford to buy them. Many new roads were built and paved throughout North America to allow cars to be driven from town to town. People were able to travel much more easily and to visit places that had previously been difficult to reach. Some problems also came with the widespread use of cars. One of these problems was air pollution because car engines burn gasoline, which produces poisonous exhaust fumes. Gradually, new laws and new technology have led to reductions in the air pollution that is caused by cars. Moreover, cars today are much more fuel efficient than they were in the past, requiring less gasoline to travel a given distance. However, this pollution is still a problem because of the many millions of cars that are used each day. Another problem has been car accidents, which have caused many thousands of deaths each year. During the 1960s, some journalists brought attention to the unsafe features of many cars. As a result, the safety of cars has been greatly improved. In addition, the use of seat belts is now required by law. However, car accidents continue to be a serious problem. The future is likely to bring many interesting new changes to the car: improvements in the safety of cars, in fuel efficiency, and in the cleanliness of car emissions are continuing to be made. Also, the increasing use of the car in economically developing countries will probably have important effects upon people's lives around the world. Sexual attitudes and behavior. During the past several decades, there have been major changes within most Western countries in people's attitudes towards sex and in sexual behavior. For people who have lived throughout this period, the changes have seemed quite remarkable. Until the early 20th century, people in most Western countries did not have permissive attitudes regarding sexuality. For the most part, young people were expected to wait until marriage before having sexual intercourse. Of course, some premarital sex did occur, and prostitution was not rare. However, sexual behavior was relatively restricted. As the 20th century progressed, there was a gradual trend toward liberalization of attitudes toward sex. However, this trend was greatly speeded after 1960, when the first birth control pills became available. These contraceptive pills made it possible for women to engage in sexual intercourse without much risk of an unwanted pregnancy. As a result, many women were more willing to have premarital sex. 
than was previously the case. Also during the 60s, Western countries were reaching high levels of wealth and education. A new and very large generation of young people was approaching adulthood, and there was a mood of rebellion against traditional norms. There was an increase in the number of people who engaged in sex before marriage, and also a greater openness about such behavior. By the 1970s, sexual attitudes had become quite liberal, and many young people were quite promiscuous in their sexual behavior. However, this pattern reversed somewhat during the 1980s. There was increased concern about sexually transmitted diseases, including AIDS. Moreover, many young women had been uncomfortable with the idea of unrestricted sexual behavior. As a result, sexual attitudes became slightly more conservative during the 1980s and 1990s, although they remained much more liberal than in previous decades. In the early 21st century, most young people in Western countries begin having sex during their high school years, although some people wait until they are considerably older. Some young people are promiscuous, but most engage in monogamous relationships that typically last for a period of several months or a few years. When one relationship ends, another usually begins soon after. This pattern usually continues until marriage. After marriage, most people have sex exclusively with their spouse. However, some people do commit adultery. Sexuality has changed a great deal in recent decades. It will be very interesting to see how people's sexual attitudes and behavior will change in the future. The Mississippi River. The Mississippi River is the longest river within the United States and the fourth longest river in the world. This river holds a special place in American history and literature, and in the imagination of ordinary Americans. The Mississippi River begins in the hills of northern Minnesota, near the Canadian border, and flows southward about 3,700 kilometers through 10 states before draining its water and silt into the Gulf of Mexico. Traditionally, the river is viewed as a natural boundary between the eastern and western halves of the United States. Until the year 1803, the areas to the west of the Mississippi River and the areas around the mouth of the river were claimed by Spain and by France. In that year, the French Emperor Napoleon decided to sell this land to the United States of America. This sale, which is called the Louisiana Purchase, was very important for the United States. By controlling the Mississippi River, the Americans would be able to use it for transporting goods and people in this rapidly developing area. For many years, riverboats were the main method of long-distance transportation for people living near the Mississippi. Steam-powered boats with large paddle wheels that pushed the boat forward were very popular in the time before cars and airplanes. One of the famous cities along the Mississippi River is St. Louis. This city is known as the Gateway to the West. During the 19th century, St. Louis was the last large town that people would pass through on their way to a new farmland farther west. Today, St. Louis is famous for the Gateway Arch, a tall monument that welcomes people to the West. St. Louis is also known as the city where the music known as the blues began. Near the mouth of the Mississippi River is another famous city, New Orleans. In terms of the styles of buildings, New Orleans is said to be the most unusual American city because it is influenced so strongly by Spanish and French traditions. Even today, the traditional festival of Mardi Gras is celebrated in New Orleans each year. New Orleans and the surrounding areas of the state of Louisiana are famous for spicy Cajun food. This style of cooking was developed by the French-speaking settlers of Louisiana. The Mississippi River is famous in many stories of American literature. For example, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn which were written by the author Mark Twain, are both set along the Mississippi River. Today, the federal and state governments of the United States are working to preserve the natural environment along the Mississippi River. People recognize the importance of keeping this river healthy 
and clean. Doctors Without Borders In 1999, the Nobel Prize for Peace was won by the organization known as Doctors Without Borders. This is the English name for the organization, based in Belgium, which won the prize for its humanitarian assistance to people around the world in areas that have been struck by disaster. The fundamental ideas of Doctors Without Borders is that people who suffer from a disaster have the right to receive professional help as soon as possible. The organization helps people regardless of their nationality, race, religion, ethnicity, sex, or political opinions. Also, the assistance provided by Doctors Without Borders is given in response to all kinds of disasters, such as famines, earthquakes, and wars. The people who belong to Doctors Without Borders are experienced medical workers who volunteer their time, effort, and skills in an attempt to help people who are in need. These volunteers include doctors, nurses, surgeons, anesthetists, laboratory technicians, and other medical workers. There are also some non-medical volunteers who work for Doctors Without Borders in positions of administration or logistics. Volunteers must first take a course before participating in a humanitarian mission. They promise to abide by a code of professional ethics, and they promise to remain neutral in any conflicts within a disaster area. A mission typically lasts about six months, but the duration varies. The volunteers are insured by the organization, but they are not paid in any way for their work. When Doctors Without Borders began in 1971, it consisted of only a few French doctors who wanted to provide humanitarian aid to people in disaster areas. Over the years, it grew rapidly, and by 2001, Doctors Without Borders had 2,500 volunteers working in 80 countries around the world. They have helped people by providing emergency health care, vaccinations, medicine, water and basic food, and also by developing improved water and sanitation systems. In, in many areas, Doctors Without Borders has also helped to provide basic medical training to local people. Although Doctors Without Borders remains neutral in any conflicts within a disaster area, the organization does speak out against abuses of human rights. By remaining independent of the influence of governments and corporations, Doctors Without Borders is able to criticize the people and organizations who cause suffering. The volunteers are witnesses who tell the world about the cruelty that is inflicted upon innocent people. Obviously, the work of Doctors Without Borders is extremely important. The volunteers of this organization are brave and selfless people whose efforts have relieved the suffering of millions of people.